Welcome to the After Hours Podcast, hosted by Harry Haas and James Friedlender, presented by My Investing Club. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today, we have a very special guest. We have Aloha Trader Austin, who is a uh, previous person we've had on. Uh, he's one of my favorite mods in the group, so I'm glad to have him back. So thank you for coming back on, man. Yeah, man, of course. I didn't know that I was going to be having a, a, a meeting with Tom Holland today. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was Tom Holland, dude. Zendaya is hot as fuck. <laughs> um, so I guess today we're, it's kind of an interesting one because the market has kind of sucked as far as long bias traders go. I wouldn't even say it's been amazing for sure. Like, it's easier for shorts. I would just say it's been a shit market in general. Yeah. So I kind of, Harry had the idea of kind of talking about this and how you're handling it. Cause you're obviously one of the more long biased guys. You've mentioned it before, how hard it is right now, like, mentally dealing with this like day to day. So if you kind of want to get into that, like how you're dealing with it, you know, I mean, this is a long drought it, or it feels like it, maybe it's not, I don't know. It feels long for me. So, you know, how have you been dealing with all this crap? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, just, uh, I mean, just to blow, blow the door open. It's pretty, it's pretty garbage. And I, and I feel like a lot of people are struggling and, yeah. you know, I just, the first thing I wanted to say is if you, if you're mostly a long bias trader and you are struggling, um, you like the reason why I'm so open about it is to let people know that like, you're not alone. Like this is, this is a very shit market. And what I mean by shit market is it, it's not that there isn't opportunities. It's just that there is a certain lack of the, the kind of continuation opportunities that day traders uh, tend to have um, adapted towards. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. For, as far as for me, it's been, um, I think that, uh, as far as the day ones go, the day ones are like pretty choppy, like un untradeable on day ones. Um, and so then that leaves you like, what else are you going to trade? And for me, it's really been a lot of these kind of like multi-day runners or a lot of bounce setups like that. But if we're not getting quality day one trades, that makes it hard. It makes it harder uh, as far as the multi-day runners go, because you know, if we're not getting good day one trades with a lot of volume and that, you know, people aren't kind of buying into and, and paying attention to, um, it makes it a lot harder for things to bounce. And like last week, I believe we got, uh, we're recording this on January 21st, 2022. And last week we got like, uh, we got SBEV as a runner, which I got. Um, and that was one that was kind of, it popped up on day one, didn't really die, didn't really die. And then on Friday it ran. And then it was TKAT, which both just kind of uh, flew out of the gates. That was more of a uh, stock that had to do with like NFTs and stuff like that. But I mean, it's really been slim pickings. And it's not like there isn't longs. Like when you look at the market as a whole, there are going to be stocks that went up, you know, on, on the day, like in the NASDAQ or in wherever. But, you know, as far as the good quality loan setups go, it's like, once in a while, at least once a week, you used to get like a day two trap where it would go kind of like red to green and like squeeze early shorts out on like day two. But those, it seems, have been completely eliminated. And so it's like, okay, what are we really left with? The only play that has really been half-assing for me, and like, I don't know if you trade these types of setups or setups when we have like a day one and it's like beaten down and then we get that bounce day. Um, I've been trading a little bit of those and that's been kind of working out for me a little bit, but as far as day one goes, like if you're trying to trade something like neuro, um, where it, we would just kind of like, uh, pop out and then just like stuff that's completely untradeable. Like I was looking at that for me and I was like, fuck, I can't trade this, you know? And as far as the top of the range goes, when you have these setups where, you know, we go and we, we kind of make a high and we consolidate underneath that high for a little bit. And then we try and break that, you know, high again in order to continue and go higher, like Austin was talking about. The top of the range is almost all gone. So if the top of the range has been put in, top has been set, the odds of us breaking that top in this market are like very few to none. So it has been very, very, very difficult as far as those types of trades go as well. 
And it's really been just blowing out or it's been saving shorts, to be honest. Like when we get shit running again, there will be accounts flow. Like there, yeah. there's been yeah. a lot of, yeah. a lot of bad habits, I think, as far oh, yeah. as the go. Well, dude, in this market too, it's like, well, first of all, I feel like this drought's been a long time. And like, I don't know. It's like, I feel like we've been joking about it so long and like now it's not a joke anymore. It's just like <laughs> so yeah. dead every day. And it's like, Lately, I feel like we're in this market where I've been ranting about this a lot is like everyone could short and hold at the open. And yeah. most things have been like pretty much fading. It's, it's almost like an impossible to lose as a short. And like, I guess as a long buy, like guys, how do you both like handle seeing shorts make easy money for like these periods of time? It's like we all know eventually we're going to hit that runner. We think, we hope. But how do you deal with that? Like seeing people make money, make money, make money. And like the, it's got to be a mental toll watching your setups not really come so i guess like austin how do you handle that and like how do you kind of keep yourself grounded yeah i mean you know like the market takes turns you know it, it's not like i mean i you know we definitely had our fun time like we oh, definitely yeah. had our fun yeah, time yeah. in 2020 you know like 2020 it like I, I i almost felt bad i felt like i was kind of squeezing everybody um but <laughs> yeah <it's>, me <laughs> the market takes turns but i will say this on on that like you just got to remain resilient. You just have to know that um, you have to have faith in either yourself. Like you're either going to, you know, you're going to learn to adapt. And, and, and I'll talk about ways that I've adapted a little bit, but you're going to have to find ways. You're just going to have to trust that you're going to find ways to adapt. Uh, or you just have to be patient and say, you know what, it's just not good right now, but it will get good. And just, you know, you know, and use humor and, you know, celebrate your friends, whether they're shorts or longs that, you know, if they're making money, you just, you know, you're just happy for them. Um, and you, you know, it's just, you know, like you're just waiting for the clock to, you know, to, to yeah. hit your number. Uh, and you know, when that clock hits your number, that's why it's so important that you don't just blow off steam. You, like you can never, ever, ever lose your patience. Like that's the thing about being a trader and especially a long trader right now is you have to hold, hold on, hold on to your patience, never lose it. Yeah. Never just be like, F it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to buy this. I'm not selling it. Like you can't, you can't do that. Like you yeah. can't have an, you know, like Harry had one a long time, but you can't have an, I don't care moment. Yeah. Right. And we've all had them, but that's, that's what you really have to, to focus on. Um, n not letting go is not letting go of the patients. And it will like, like we just, like we have a 200% runner today. Like it will happen. Right. Yeah. It really will yeah. happen. Yeah. And I think as far as that goes for me, um, it, I think, for me, as far as like longing goes, and this, this probably can go for a lot of people, but it's like that first trade really sets the tone. Like, so if you have a, a really shitty, impatient first trade, that is what can really drive you downhill. So I've really been focusing on in this kind of market and just, uh, you know, even in, see, uh, when, when the market's in your favor and you get a little bit sloppy, um, that type of, that type of, you know, situation can really put you in a dark place when the market kind of switches over, right? Like if I, if I was sloppy chasing the highs on every long and somehow getting bailed out, I would have blown up in this market. So I think it's really just saying to yourself, okay, you know, that first trade is going to set the tone for me. So I'm not going to uh, average down on a broken stock or I'm not going to chase something, you know, after it's already kind of ran and I'm just pulling it up super, super late. Um, I'm going to be patient and wait for the types of plays that I usually focus on. And that's what can really kind of help you uh, a lot more. And in, in, in my opinion, you know, um, it's that first trade, you know, like if you're, if your first trade is, uh, you chasing into a major resistance level, like nine times out of 10, that's probably going to reject. And then if you kind of keep holding that and keep holding it, and then maybe even average down and average down more or what, like, I, I don't really average down. I just cut it. But like, I know a lot of people take that first trade and then they average down and then they average down a little bit more and then they're kind of fucked. Um, just, you know, be very, very patient with that first trade and you, your day can go a lot better than, uh, you know, not being patient. And, and almost once you kind of have that first bad trade, you kind of get in like a drunken state where it's like, oh, I can do another one. 
and then that one doesn't work. And then you go down a hole and you go down further and you go down further. And then by the end of the day, when the market shuts off and you're, you know, sitting there by yourself, you're like, what the fuck did I do today? You know, and th that's how those types of situations can get started. So, I mean, for me, I try and be proactive and just really, really kind of try and set the tone early. I, I feel like, I feel like for shorts, it's funny. Like I feel like short bias guys never really have like droughts either. It's like, cause there's always opportunity. Like when the market's fucking nuts and shit's like blowing up, there's always chances and like, there's always plays for us and all that stuff. So it's like, I guess I've never really had to deal with that. And I think that's just what makes it makes longing that much harder. That's why I really do think it's 10 times hard, harder to be a, a successful long bias guy. Um, but yeah, I mean, Dude, I'm just waiting for the the I'm waiting for the times when like all these guys who are making shit tons of money just kind of uh, uh, shorting just blow up because once things actually start moving, I think people forget how violent like some of these moves will actually be. Yeah, that, that's something I really want to touch on is that um, when I first started to become a longer, I was like, why would I like when I first started trading uh, the market and and, and this will, this should be a really good bit. Um, uh, the market really does go in cycles and. Wherever you start to join trading, you're jo you don't know yet, but you're j you're joining in a cycle, and that's why when whenever you first start trading, you start making money because it's so obvious, and you only know that the, the cycle that you're in. And once you you join, you everything looks like you only see things through one lens, and you look at it and you say, "Dude, I see that stuff is fading. I see that once there's a view up reject, it does this, and all of a sudden it's just so simple. And you just trade, you execute, and you win, and you win, and you win, and you win, and you win. In the beginning, and you're just like, "Dude, I'm the best fucking trader ever. Like I just started. I'm just banking money, and but you don't know that you're in a cycle that's exactly working for what you just learned. Um, and and, and this is. And that's what happened to me. And I started and, I, and everything, dude, it was a lot lower volume, but stuff would pop. It would do like a little, like stuffs were kind of new, not new, but like, I mean, th they were, um, they were, they were much more obvious and less frequent. So when a stuff happened, it was a little bit more rare. Now we have stuffs every day, Yeah. but we see a stuff. Oh, then it would tank. Right. So you short it, make money easy. But then I started looking after, after a little bit, I started um, once I started getting squeezed a little bit, I started really focusing on charts. I did some some deep study on some charts. And just on the simplest way I could see this, I would look at a chart and I would just look at the green candles versus the red candles. Oh, did we lose James? No, I'm still here. I just it out. Okay. Yeah, I would look at the green candles and I would look at the red candles. And I would look at all these charts and the green candles on the chart, just zoom out and like look at the chart. Uh, the green candles, the green movements were so much bigger than the red ones. Yeah. Um, you know, like it would fade, 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 fade. But, you know, and so that would be like a loser as a long. But the ones that went up, I mean, we're talking two, three, four, five, six dollars. Like, I mean, yeah. these would really run. And I feel like a lot of people that are coming to trading this year uh, or even in 2021, they're looking at charts and they're like, wow, everything just goes down, huh? Right. And, so that's, the, and yeah. that's the cycle we're in. Right. And um, that's I, I guess that's the warning to new shorts that it's not always as good. Um, and for longs, you just got to recognize, you know, take a look at all of the charts for the week. And I do that every time I do a webinar. I go through all the charts to see if they're bullish or bearish. And I really I feel like that helps me really gain a sense like what did the charts look like? What did the green pushes look like? What did the red ones look at? And that really gives me an idea of the sentiment. Yeah, it's so funny you just said that. Some guy just wrote that this is his most profitable month in the last 12 trailing months. Just in main chat right now, I'm, I'm just reading that. And yeah, the market goes in cycles and you do have to be careful. This is a very, very, I feel like easy time for shorts to make money. Just like longing, we had our fun with COVID. It was very easy. People were making stupid fucking money longing. Like, and see, you're... I mean, for me, I'm not, I'm not pissed when I see shorts making money because I'm not blowing up, right? So I'm not going to be pissed uh, if I'm not, you know, blowing up or, or taking some massive losses because as far as what James kind of went back and said, where he's like, I feel like it's really hard for loans to make money. If James, it's like, if, if James just had like the experience longing that like we have, 
Uh, someone like James could walk in every single morning and make money, right? But because James doesn't necessarily have that longing experience, he's like, oh man, it's so hard. Like, where the fuck do these green candles come from, you know? But when you have like a couple years under your belt of just looking for the same thing every day in the same edge, it does get easier, right? And um, I, I think as far as shorting goes, like every single long trader, uh, the more time you long, the more I think easier it gets to become a short as well, because you know those trap areas and you know those types of areas where they're just looking to hunt for longs and they're just looking to kind of hunt for short stops or squeeze shorts out. And so as a long trader, you really need to kind of gauge that supply and demand as well. So it's like, we're almost like uh, short traders, uh, but we're not, you know, where we know where the best opportunities are to short is. And, um, you know, for, for example, we're both noticing that the top of the range is, is not really working in this market, right? No well, top of the range. Yeah, like what is, what's stopping us uh, for fucking, you know, going short there or something like that, right? And I have. <laughs> right? So, I mean, we know where, where the areas are. And, you know, I think just as far as like trading goes, everyone kind of knows the general areas where you can make money. But I mean, if you're not disciplined in order to kind of follow that, that's where you're going to kind of get in trouble. And I think just- like, I think, I, I guess it's just go. like, oh, sorry. I, I guess it's just like something that Austin actually told me one time. And like, I, I feel like it's really true right now too, is like, there are just some markets where like, you just can't use your big size. You can't use size. You can't like push and like, you like and go for it and like this market right now is a long like this has to be it i mean yeah, if you try to size it. on anything no you're just fucked you just lose and like for a short like i think it's i think it's like a good market i mean obviously you can size up shorting in, in this market too because it's a lot of uh it's a lot of things just like fading off and it's just become a lot easier to identify your risk levels but yeah i mean i think that's probably what keeps you guys so like smart is like you said all the time. Like, it's just like, this isn't it. This isn't the market. I'm going to go in guns blazing because my setups aren't there and they're not working. So I think everybody needs to kind of remember that as well. That it's just, you know, sometimes it's just not there. Well, yeah, that's the thing is um, like right now as a short, you have like, you have like, if someone's going to punch you, you have a door behind you. If you're going to get punched as a short, like in this market, you're going to have a door. Like there's going to be selling pressure at your back. So yep. even if you do have to cover, you're going to be fine as a long it's good it, like i don't we don't have that back door right now so like we can't aggressively size because because then it's going to be a scramble for who gets to get out when everyone wants to get out at the same time because yeah. there's no there's no we don't have that bid behind us because yeah, we have no liquidity to get out we have, yeah everyone's too afraid right all of the long liquidity is too afraid and yeah and, and so i wrote some things down because i my, my my brain is going there's a lot i want to get off here but um yeah, and like, like James, like you've only been a short ever, and because yeah. like innately, like when you get into trading, it's a lot easier to be a short just because you because you get to see the first part of the chart happen, and then you get to react to the first part of the chart, and it's normally down, um, and so it's just like oh, you just wait for something to pop, and then you become a player. Yeah. Let me tell you this: longs do that too. No longs know if a stock's gonna pop before it pops right so basically every retail long needs to be some form of continuation trader because we're unless we're a pumper unless we have inside information which we don't um it's really hard to know what's going to pop before it pops so you know longs are continuation traders too um you know we wait for something to pop and then we wait for a bid to hold right that's innately what we do something pops and then we wait for support to form and for that support yeah. to be stronger than the supply what I've noticed, the, the three, I, I've, made, I, I've made three adaptations that I've done for myself in this market. Um, the first thing is, like Harry said, I recognize the day one stocks. The day one stocks, they have so much volume, but it doesn't go anywhere. The upper part of the range is yeah. capped on those. It basically just becomes an algo trap. Any day one stock that's the hot chick of the day that is, that is a hot chick just to absorb all of the hopeful longs. And that's an algo trap. So I try to avoid that one, yeah. you know, or trade that one small. And, and I messed up on neuro the other week, you know, like I, 
I, I just said, you know what? I think this is going to be the day one that works. I was wrong. I tried to guess early, but I've normally been avoiding the day ones because those are just straight algo traps. They're going to go, they're going to be choppy. They're going to hold up um, just so that longs keep buying. Yeah. And it's not going anywhere. The upper part of the range, it's not breaking that high. Um, I have also changed. The second change I've made is I'm not really looking for squeezes anymore. Um, the, 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 the longs that I'm looking for are near kind of just support. Like I'll buy when there is support, but I'm not looking for it to break high a day. I'm just looking, you know, I think it's going to bounce here. So I've kind of eliminated a lot of going for squeezes, which for me kind of defeats the purpose of longing, which is why I've kind of started to short a little bit too, but I, I go for less squeezes. So I go for more support buys as opposed to a squeeze-based trade. And the third adaptation is I just walk. I just walk sooner. I don't have, I don't press on. Normally, like if I'm up nice on the day, I might continue to, to try to trade a little bit in the afternoon. Maybe yeah. there's an afternoon squeeze. Maybe I can double my money. I don't even try now. I just, yeah. I just walk early. I get green on the day and I walk. How do you determine like when that market cycle changes? Like, cause like, I, I'm always curious because like I see a runner and then I'm like, oh, I wonder if this is going to change the sentiment. Like how many days or how many times do you need to see something happen before you're like, all right, the market sentiment's changed. Now it's okay to chase a little bit more. Now it's okay to go for the squeeze trades. Like how do you yeah. even figure that out? Because I still yeah. don't know how to do that. Yeah. So, think, so think of it as a bucket of strength. I just want the bucket to be full. It could happen from one runner. It could be one runner that goes up 2,000%. Or, or it could be 10 runners that go 200%. You know what I'm saying? Or it could be, you know, or it could be five runners that go 400%, right? Just do the math on like the bucket is 200% of strength or something. And it, it, it's not like, I don't have a bucket. I don't keep track. It's just a mental <laughs> thing. I need to see enough strength in the market. And ideally it's more than one, like 10, 200% runners is a lot better than one 2000% runner, obviously. Um, you know, but I, I just want to see an amount of strength and it, there really is no gauge, but, um, the second accounts start blowing up the second, um, the second as a short, if I would be fearful of a stock breaking high a day, that's when I know it's time to press right now. Like if, if, if something breaks high a day as a short, I'm still like, yeah, but it'll probably stuff, but as a short, <laughs> I can hold this. yeah, but as a short, if a stock goes up to high a day and I'm like, maybe like i'm not sure actually like this one actually kind of looks scary i already know it's time to press the second there's the fear i know it's time to press because that's for a short you know as a short um the scariest thing is holding through a high a day push that could hold up oh yeah yep i think oh, yeah. as, as far as that goes for me too um I, the way I like to kind of do it is I kind of do it in like two parts, but it's all in my head. Like I don't track market strength, you know, on like Excel or anything like that. Number one is like our stocks giving back their gains at the end of the day. That is a big kind of tell for me is, is the mark. Like we look at DAX, that shit was at 3.7 and it went to $3 at the afternoon. That tells you what type of market we're in. Uh, yeah, no, that was that, that was insanely weak when it when it gave everything back. That oh, just yeah. that showed such weakness. Oh yeah, that that I think that really showed a lot of kind of like holes in the market. Um, and I think another thing that I look for is like, okay, so let's say we get that first runner, we get that 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 runner that everyone is like, we're gonna light it up. The next day, is it only that runner that people are still paying attention to? Or is it like other runners that people are now saying, wow, this is strong, wow, this is strong. You know, and you're gonna have that, you're gonna have some newer guys like an MIC be like, oh man, like we're back into a strong market. But everyone's trying to kind of anticipate. It was that day that we got, to, what was that stock? It was like uh, uh, PHUN or something like that, or not PHUN, but it started with a P or something like that. And it went from like uh, $2 to like 14 bucks or whatever. Like, and we, like after DWAC, like after DWAC went like, and all these stocks were, were really, really, really strong, right? And, you know, you woke up after that DWAC move happened and every single stock was strong. You could take a broken stock and make money as a long trader. 
You could take a hot chip stock and make money as a long trader. That to me is a really, really strong market when everything is just going up and people are like, wow, we had that DAT stack or DAT stock that uh, those Twitter guys were in. That was going up. We had that, uh, you know, I remember that day so completely where I had missed kind of like the big hot chick because I had been so trained to say, okay, I'm avoiding this. I would gotten in the, the habit of saying I'm, I'm avoiding this one because like I was expecting that kind of we weren't going to be able to break the top of the range. These algos are shit type of movements. But, you know, when we do get a kind of strong market or a strong stock that kind of lights it back up again, don't be afraid to go back and press those hot chips. Don't be afraid to go back and, and press those broken stocks a bit more than you usually would. Don't be afraid to, right? Don't be afraid to go in heavy and go in hard because we don't know how long we're going to have for this type of shit. So it's like, we're so conditioned right now to not trading the day ones as a long trader, right? Like you, like you tried it with neuro, didn't really work out. Like today, if we see a day one runner, there's no way we're going to fucking touch it. Right. But if let's say this afternoon, we get this thousand percent runner. And the next day we see a bunch of stocks up. We see a bunch of kind of things that are up. Do not be fucking afraid to take those trades because those trades are what is going to, uh, at least help make make back whatever you've lost, and it's going to really be able to fucking you know be a confidence booster for the next couple of weeks if we get stronger again, right? So, I mean, that would be my advice to anyone who's struggling right now and who's like, I'm not touching the day ones, I'm not touching anything, I'm just gonna sit sit it out and wait it out. The minute we see strength again, go balls fucking deep, balls to the fucking wall. Because every other long trader is going to be like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, man. But you wake up that morning, you see a bunch of stocks up fucking 100%. Everyone is saying that's crazy. Uh, we had other stocks that were running after DWAC when, right? Like, fucking take the trade, you know? Don't be a, don't, you know... Don't, uh, I don't even know what to say on this podcast if we're like, no, we're not. Not. Yeah. you know what I'm thinking? Um, yeah. don't no, be a pansy, I mean, don't be a pansy, bro. Take because the- those times pay for this time, right? Those yeah. times are going to pay for this, this patient time. Like this is why you're being patient. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That's what we're waiting for. So it's kind of like, as far as like long traders go, like know what you're, know what you're fucking waiting for, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think, I mean, as we're coming up on kind of like the 30 minute mark, I mean, I think, I think you guys kind of gave like a really good kind of basis of like as a long, like what you need to be doing in like the slow times and like in markets like this. And I guess like, I mean, I guess we don't, I'm trying to think of like a good ending question because I guess, I guess what I'm wondering for the last kind of bit here is like, you know, how do you know to take advantage or like when things happen, you take advantage of the hot times like you put yourself in a position where it's so important that when your market's in your in your right like zone that's when you're pressing that's when you're pushing stuff down and have you guys like over the years been able to recognize that more and more and like actually been able to press the gas or have you missed it because like for years like I kind of missed like a lot of big opportunities like that I missed first red days I missed like strong like like good shorting opportunities because I was afraid like did you were you guys able to do that right away or was it hard for you to kind of do that I think I'll leave it to Austin yeah anyway uh yeah so dude that that every single year but because the life market goes in cycle it's like every year you get one or two chances and and it really just takes that much time right because cycles last a few months at a time and so you're you know, there's all, after every cycle, you can always do something better. And you're always going to be like, I didn't do that perfectly. I, I like, I could have done this. I could have did this on this play or man, you look back and I'm just like, Oh dude, on RKDA, I could have went this much size or I could have added here or on DWAC, I could have done this, you know, it's like, or I should have not been afraid um, to, to, to just buy into that strength or, or attempt to get that black swan, you know, just, you know what I'm saying? Just shit like that. You're always going to have, after every cycle, you're going to look back and see like what you could have done. And you're probably going to get better on the next cycle. Like you're probably going to get a little bit better and make a little bit of those changes, but you know, you can only improve so much at a time, but yeah, when it does hit that time, I have gotten better. I have gotten better. I, I, 
Um, I add almost to the point of being recklessly sometimes into strength. And you guys have probably seen those charts of mine. I have, you know, like, but, and <laughs> so when they work, they pay for all the times they don't. Um, so like, I mean, I've gotten really aggressive on adding to strength. I've gotten, you know, I've, I've gotten aggressive on rolling more size. I've got aggressive by, by like, not just selling on the first pop, like, yeah. you know, when that hot market's here, yeah. you know, work on really letting that extend. Like, you know, I mean, if I've got like, if I got like 10,000 shares, every 50 cents, I, every 50 cents I wait is yeah. another five grand. Yeah, right. Exactly. So I mean, just wait, if I can get one more halt up, you know, it's, you know, like it, there's just different ways that you can improve each time, whether it's being a little bit more patient on the exit, being a little bit more aggressive with the size, maybe adding um, right, right as that, that stuff that, you know, it might stuff and then hold and then, you know, holding through that one extra and, and being able or bailing it and having the guts to be like, no, this is the hot market. It stuffed me, but then it helped. I'm going to get back in. It's all of that stuff, you know, that, you know, each, that's what being aggressive is all about. And like, you just, you know, you just get better. You just work on it like every that. cycle. Yeah, I really like that. I think I, uh, um, just to kind of like finish off here, I think I really kind of like hit on this question, like before James kind of asked it. Um, but I think also, um, you know, when you, when you see, you're going to realize a shift and you're going to feel it. That's the thing. You're, you're, you're going to feel it. And if you can just wait for that kind of shift, when everyone's like that oh shit moment of we're starting to pick back up. And I feel like, uh, you know, when we had like BBIG and a couple other things, like Austin and I were saying things like, well, we're starting to kind of pick up a bit. We're starting, we're starting, right? The key word is starting. And it's really <laughs> just Austin and I hoping and anticipating for things to continue. It's not actually really starting. It's just Austin and I just fucking praying that we're actually starting. It's like when uh, we get this hot chick runner and every single short is like, well, it's gonna break down this time. It's gonna break down this time, right? They don't really know it's gonna fucking break down. They're just anticipating to, to try and be that guy who's the hero and calls the top. And it's the same thing with this kind of situation here. And so I think that, you know, when you're, when you kind of feel it in your bones and when you're uh when you're gonna know you're gonna wake up and chat it's gonna feel like it's christmas morning even though it's a random fucking day and you're gonna be like wow that's amazing like everything's up everything's strong and like you can actually see that everything's up and everything's strong and you're not just making this shit up that's the day for you to be really aggressive that's the day where you can take some long off that first candle to see if we can break the range on that hot chick that's the day where you can really get aggressive buying that dip on the hot chip. And the other broken ones, that's the day where you can add some size there. The next fucking time that this happens, I'm loading the boat on every single fucking stop. And a couple may not work, that's okay. But I am loading the fucking boat on the first candle of every goddamn fucking stock. I'm going to long it on that day two. I'm going to long it on the day ones. I'm going to long fucking broken stocks. Everything's going to halt up and it's going to be a fucking miracle. I'm buying all fucking four, all fucking five. Um, and that's how I'm going to do it. Because after DWAC, I only bought one or two. And I was like, man, I missed a lot of money. So if you can study that day after VWAC and what ran and what didn't, and I'm sure that we have a runner somewhere. We have like a, a, an after hours runner's calendar if you want to fucking go through and see what ran. And if you can study that and how those moves kind of were made, then you're going to be able to because we had DWAC that was a halt up. The other P stock was a halt up. The broken one started running after that momentum continued. <laughs> buy the fucking dip, buy it all. That was awful. <laughs> you know, I, I have one more thing um, that I do want to add. Uh, one last thing. Um, when, when you when it, when when the day comes and Harry's talking about that day where like you, you just know today's the act, you're and you and you feel a little hesitation. The the best thing that you can do to quell that hesitation is to get in is to get in a hundred chairs. Just get like put that put that fun ticker, you know, in your position column. Whether it's 100 chairs, yeah. 500 chairs, 1,000, just get in because it's a lot easier. Like when you know that you have to act, uh, the first the first act is always the toughest. So just get in the trade. It almost doesn't matter what price as long as you know, you're know you not full size. 
Just get yeah. it and then you can add to it. It's a lot easier to add to a position than it is to start a position psychologically. Best thing that's actually a really good tip. I like that. Yeah, that's funny. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, yeah, perfect. Yeah. That was a good way to end it. That's a good perfect. way to end it.